Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton. Today I'd like to talk to you about power. Our objectives for today are going to be to calculate both average and instantaneous power, to calculate the power required to maintain the motion of an object, and to calculate the work performed by a force that is supplying a constant power. So with that, let's dive in and talk about what power is. Power is the rate at which work is done, or you could also define it as the rate at which a force does work. Typically, we would write the average power, P average, as the change in work done over some specified time interval. And the units of power then are going to be the units of work, joules, divided by units of time, per second. And we also call a joule per second a watt. And you may be more familiar with the term horsepower. A horsepower is actually 746 watts, but we pretty much stick with watts in physics. Now instead of looking at just average power, we could also look at instantaneous power, the power delivered at a specific instant in time. We're looking over a very, very small time interval. So power now is going to be the limit as time approaches zero of delta W over delta T, or the differential of work with respect to time. And we know already that since the differential of work is equal to force dotted with the differential of R, that power then becomes F dot dr dt. But if you recall, dr dt, well, that's really our definition of velocity. So because dr dt is equal to velocity, we can then say that power is equal to force dotted with our velocity vector. And you may want to go back and um, go over our dot product video just as a refresher on those math skills, the um, scalar operation for multiplication of vectors. So power equals force dotted with velocity, or the rate at which work is done. All right, with that, let's take a look at a couple examples. In our first problem here, Bob pushes a box across a horizontal surface at a constant speed of one meter per second. If the box has a mass of 30 kilograms, find the power Bob supplies given that the coefficient of kinetic friction of sliding friction is 0 0.3. Well, I would start with the free body diagram for the box over here. There's our box. We have the force of Bob horizontally. Opposing that, we have the force of kinetic friction. We have the normal force from the surface, and we have the weight of the box itself, mg. So from there, I can use Newton's second law. The net force in the x direction is going to be the force of Bob minus the force of friction, and that all has to equal mass times the acceleration in the x direction. We already know that the acceleration in the x direction is going to be zero because it's moving at constant speed. So the force of Bob must equal the force of friction. And by the way, the force of friction, if you recall, is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Now let's use Newton's second law in the y direction. Net force in the y direction, we have the normal force pointing up minus mg, and that has to equal zero. Once again, the box isn't accelerating up or down through the surface. Therefore, we know the normal force must equal mg. Now I can take a look, and since normal force equals mg, I can replace normal force in my equation over there with mg. When I do that, I find that the force of Bob must be equal to mu k mg, or 0 0.3 times the mass of the box, 30 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity, we'll estimate at 10 meters per second squared, or 300 times 0.3, 90 newtons. All right, we know the force that's applied. Now to get the power, we can go and take a look. Power is equal to force dotted with velocity. 
And in this case, the force and velocity are in the same direction. So force dotted velo with velocity, Fv cos theta, if they're in the same direction, that theta is going to be zero degrees and the cosine of theta is one. So that really just becomes force times velocity or 90 newtons times one meter per second. And I come up with the power 90 newton meters per second or 90 watts. All right, fairly straightforward. Let's take a look at another example. A 9,000 kilogram truck accelerates uniformly from rest to a final speed of 36 meters per second in a time of 12 seconds. What is the average power required to accomplish this? Well, since it accelerates uniformly, we know it must have a constant acceleration. So let's see what we can do here. The average power developed is just going to be the average force times the average velocity. Well, if that's times the average velocity, the force average is just going to be mass times acceleration, since the acceleration is going to be constant. So that becomes mass times acceleration times V average, or 9,000 kilograms. Our acceleration we can get from our kinematic equations. Acceleration is change in velocity over time. Our final velocity, 36 meters per second, minus initial, divided by our time of 12 seconds. So there's our acceleration times our average velocity. If it's constant acceleration and we go from zero to 36, the average is halfway in between the two, 18 meters per second. Plug that all into my calculator. That becomes 9,000 kilograms times three meters per second squared times 18 meters per second or average power must be about 486,000 watts, which we might write as 486 kilowatts. All right, let's take a look at one more, something that requires a little bit heavier calculus. Find the power delivered by the net force to a 10 kilogram mass at time t equals four seconds, given the position of the mass, is given by this function 4t cubed minus 2t. Well, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the velocity and acceleration functions. Our velocity function is just going to be the derivative of the position function, or that's going to be 12t squared minus 2. In similar fashion, the acceleration is going to be the derivative of velocity with respect to time or that looks like 24t. All right, once I have that, I can find the net force using Newton's second law. Net force is equal to mass times acceleration. We have a 10 kilogram mass. We have our acceleration of 24t or a net force of 240t. Now we can find the power delivered. The power is force dotted with velocity, which is going to be force times velocity cos theta. And in this case, again, the force and velocity are in the same direction. The angle is zero, cosine of zero is one. So cosine theta becomes one, it just becomes force times velocity. Therefore, the power is going to be equal to our force, 240t, times our velocity given by 12t squared minus 2. A little bit of algebra then tells me that the power is going to be 2880t cubed minus 480t. However, we want to know the power when t equals 4 seconds exactly. So given that t equals 4 seconds, I can plug 4 seconds into there, and I find out that I have a power equal to 182,400 watts. Or I could write that as 182.4 kilowatts. All right, hope that gets you started with power. If you have questions or need more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thank you very much and make it a great day.